Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Love Is Podcast, Kim Sorrell. Kim, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. Hey, Neil, I'm doing great. And yes, I'm very excited. Catherine Lidstone, you're like who everybody wants to be, I think. You are so multifaceted. You're a great <laughs> actor, and you write songs, and you sing beautifully, and you play the viola and you play the guitar you probably play seven <laughs> other instruments and graduated top of your class and ran cross country and, <laughs> and oh my gosh you just do so much you are voted most likely to succeed probably in high school wow <laughs> you guys did so much research I'm amazed <laughs> <laughs> and yes. you're one of my favorite shows that we're going to talk about a little bit but you've got this upcoming movie that is going to be absolutely fantastic. Will you play Mary? Yes. A childhood friend of Jesus, Lazarus That's and right. Martha's sister in The Chosen. And I, I, I love you in that. What is that experience like for you? Oh my gosh. It's just been a wonderful experience from like start to be, and I just feel like it's, and, and it's not over. We're still, you know, planning next season, but I'm just like amazed at what's been happening. I'm shocked by it. I, I love it. I have such a blast working with everybody on the project and we're just telling such a cool story. So I'm really, really blessed. You never yeah. thought it was going to be this big, did you? <laughs> no, I don't think anyone did. I have this fun story of having run into one of my co-stars from the show when he first got cast in the first season. And we were hiking just randomly with our own people. And we ran into each other on a hike in LA and he was describing, he's like, yeah, it's, I, nobody knows what's going to happen. It's just this low budget show out of Texas about Jesus and I was like, what? I just, I, I immediately I was interested, but of course nobody knew what was going to happen with it. It's been amazing to witness. Yes. And from what I understand, the cast and crew are like one big happy family. Like it's a wonderful set <laughs> to work on. Yes. It's very, very fun. I feel like everyone's very welcoming, jovial, um, just a lot of great energy, a lot of jokes, a lot of fun. It's good. It's a good set. <laughs> That's good. So fun. So you've got this new movie coming. 47 yes. days. Yeah. Yes. Um, 47 days with Jesus. And I love the premise of the movie, but it just looks like it's going to be so interesting to watch and yeah. fun to watch. And Philip Yoshi, who plays Philip in The Chosen, is yes. your husband in the movie. That's right. And yeah. So um, how did this whole film come about? Well, I just, I remember receiving it as an audition just for my agent, normal standard practice. And uh, I, I was traveling at the time. So I was scrambling to get it done for them. And then fortunately they were able to just book off of the first call, which was very helpful for my crazy itinerary. But then I had to fly back a week early to do the table read. So it was uh, a very adventurous right from the start. And I just remember being really moved by the script. I felt like the storyline is not the typical Hollywood storyline of a marriage in strife. And that's where you meet these two characters is they're not going through a good time. Um, there's, they're dealing with normal day-to-day -day issues and, and the kids are suffering and the wife is suffering and the husband's trying to keep it all together for work. And so it, it's, it's a very common story, a very relatable story. And I liked the way they approached it. I felt like it was very unique. It sounds like a unique story. And it, you, when you like a script as an actor, you just, this is what it becomes exciting, right? A project that you like, who the script, you hope you get the part and you hope that you can be able to put your, be part of a project like that. Is it hard sometimes when you get rejected? Because I know oh my God. It, it's gotta be, I've talked <laughs> to so many actors and I have no idea how you could do it. I think it in sales, when I'm doing multiple sales, I'm almost in the same boat as like, I started looking at numbers for my agency. It's the number of people I talk to who say yes versus no. I'm starting to say, Hey, I'm going to create a numbers game thing. And this is a percentage. <laughs> so you got to get through all these people to get the next sale. It's the same thing in acting, but I always get frustrated when I'm, I'm in it. I really love this. I want to work with this person. It just doesn't happen. How do you mm -hmm. deal with that to go on to the next one? So you're not in your mind saying, why didn't I get this project? Oh boy. You know, fortunately, I think what helps me a lot with that is I am very um, constantly busy and working on other things. And so whether that's other auditions or if that's a whole different genre of audition, like a voiceover or a commercial job, I, I think my mind is so occupied by all those different things that I don't really get 
extremely frustrated <laughs> like I normally would because there are letdowns and this industry is, you know, all about rejection. And as you say, many other industries suffer with that as well. I mean, any type of sales, you're going to be facing tons of rejection. I have read this one thing that was a beautiful encouragement by a young writer. And she was saying every time she got a no letter, she would send off another publication to another publication. She would send off her writing sample. So it's like, it almost oh. became an impetus, kind of like you were describing, like, I just know that no's are a part of the process and I'm just going to use this no as sort of a time marker for when I'm going to pursue my next yes. So, so I, like I have a board, was... I have a board right now of yeah. all my businesses and I'm looking at them and I'm visualizing them and I'm saying, okay, all right. Yeah. There's these days that just don't feel great, but if you go and hammer out other things, <laughs> mm -hmm. other things open up and you get disappointed and say, well, I'm glad I didn't get that. Yes. Just, yes. It was, well, God didn't really want me certainly, to Certainly. That's yeah. a part of the picture too, is after you, you know, a friend of mine has said to me recently, multiple times, he's like, rejection is God's protection. And I'm like, that's a comfort to know because as, as time passes, usually you can start to see and understand more than you would have in the moment as to why that maybe not have been the best fit for you as a project or as an artist, or, you know, maybe there were other teams and other places you were supposed to be in when that was shooting. And there's just a million things that could be the reason, but you sort of just have to trust and obey. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I had, I worked with somebody once who said every no is one step closer to a yes. And That's that true. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> okay. But you get a ton of yeses. Well, you thank God so for much. that. Yeah. You're award winning, right? I mean, you, you've been in so many things that, like you said, I'm sure that you're busy all the time. Do you have a favorite project? Oh my goodness. I mean, I just feel like I'm very, I'm very boring in the sense that whatever I'm working on right now is like the coolest thing to me. So I love, I love whatever I'm doing next or doing now. Um, like, and just as prescribed right now, the top two on my list are definitely the chosen and 47 days with Jesus. I'm just so excited about the premise of our film and the chosen has just been this whirlwind of an experience for everybody involved. Like they're traveling internationally to premiere this show all over the world to different audiences. They're translating it into, I think the most languages that any TV show has ever been translated into. So I, we are just so blessed and I think thrilled to be a part of this process. And it's an honor and it's a joy for sure. Now let's talk about The Chosen for a second before we go back in this other project. Think about Kim, how many people have watched The Chosen and then you go to an area where it's so huge internationally. She's like a rock star going to these different places. How do you get used to that? People recognizing, you now? I remember oh the days when I was a professional wrestler going into grocery stores and say, Hey, yeah. that guy right there. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my goodness. And I, and again, cause I'm doing more, not, not television and doing more radio. I don't get recognized on that end, but mm -hmm. that's so cool. And then say, aren't you that? And they, they <laughs> stare at you. Do you think that's going to come more and more for you? I think it will. I mean, especially I think it has, it has mm -hmm. already begun. And I, what's interesting is, you know, we have a, a new media world. I remember back, you know, I have a lot of mentors in, in our union and whatnot who have gotten very famous in the time when there was only one place to get famous, which was like cable TV, network TV, and there were only seven channels. And so if you were on any of those shows, you were internationally famous because that was the media at the time. We're in a new phase where there's so much media and there's so many platforms and people could just be subscribers of one or two and they may never see your show, right? So um, it's a little more fortunate in the sense that you could probably still go grocery shopping and you wouldn't be bothering or you know be approached by anybody and you wouldn't be upsetting the environment there. But if you go to the right place, I think, or any church setting or any <laughs> anywhere where your friends are having a, East, even an Easter barbecue, I've been recognized at these moments. And so it's it's very interesting because church used to be like my safe space. It was like, nobody ever knew anything about my life is in Hollywood because they were all just really concerned with, you know, the word and the Holy spirit. And now that we have this crazy international sensation show that they're all watching. And so, and so that's not really, you know, the case anymore, but, but it's a blessing and it's, it's, it's fun. And you just have to remember, you know, maybe do your hair in the morning when you leave your house, because you never know who wants a picture with you. <laughs> That's that's I, luckily yeah. I don't have to deal with that, but sometimes I'm yeah, thinking yeah. my beard gets so going and hair everywhere and like oh, you never know who you're gonna meet out, you know. Right, and I can't right. imagine you just as, as you two as women <laughs> always have to be camera ready, especially mm -hmm. if you're getting known. It's like I don't know how you do with it, especially if yeah. you're gonna do like a, a a tour like this. This tour, you gotta be camera ready versus oh okay, I'm just gonna wake up, I could be whatever and just wake up and yeah. just do a radio interview. 
Like yeah. I was doing a tour today and I'm like, oh, they, the, w- most people won't do tours to the afternoon. I'm like, oh, okay. Good to know when you do those early <laughs> morning uh, tours for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Well, so let's talk more about this film that's coming up because like you said, I think it is so relatable. I mean, people get so busy in their lives, right? They're running to the kids, little league games, and they're doing the volunteering at school and all the stuff and work. And then somebody has to do the laundry. I mean, it's like all this stuff, right? And you can get connected (laughs) as a couple. Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm interested in that part of it is um, what, what do you see with that? Like, because it is so common. So how does the show answer that? I, you know, what I think is beautiful is that, um, I think the show sort of takes people on an introspective journey, this, this film, um, it has even people who have not been raised in the faith. I've heard wonderful stories of them listening and watching the film and being ministered to by it, not even as if we're preaching to them, but just little choices that we make on a daily basis that we think only affect ourselves and how actually there's a ricochet and ripple effect on everyone around us when we make those decisions and they, we may be making them for noble reasons, but we still have to take into account the way that that's going to impress upon our children or our, you know, the lack of time we're being able to spend with our wives or whatever it is. So I think the way they've approached it is they've painted in such a way that anyone can watch this from any background and just see reflections of their own life and decisions that they're making every day and, and maybe reconsider, you know, what am I doing that I think is right, but maybe is hurting someone inadvertently that I didn't even plan upon, you know? So it, I think it brings awareness to that. And um, and I just think the way they've tied in this gospel story is what we're calling the inner story. And it's, it's like these little flashbacks because it's a family tradition from a grandfather trying to share with his grandchildren the story of, the, of Easter on the holiday when they're at their parents' house. And so it's a beautiful... I would say foray into that story in a way we've never really seen it. It's amazing numbers like choreography and music that is helping tell the story in a new way, in a family friendly way where everyone can watch it and um, still impress upon people, you know, the sacrifice that Jesus made in those last seven days and what happened when he came back to earth and what was that like for him and for all of his followers. And so I think it's a, it's a really beautiful way to delve into it. And what's nice about the way we're doing it is that I, you know, I feel like the chosen right now in theaters is really intense and people are like, bring your tissue boxes and be ready. You're going to get, you know, just like such a heart wrenching experience. And I think with this one, even though it's about really important stuff, I think they've figured out a way to tell the story in such a way that it's, it's almost light. it's, it's like, you, it'll be a breath of fresh air. I think after (laughs) the whole season four comes out and we're chosen so when will this uh come out when is this project coming out this is coming out in theaters march 11th 12th and 14th and we're just letting everybody know in the last two weeks or three weeks like 200 something theaters have been added it's coming out nationally there's already 900 theaters that have signed on to air this and so if your local theater is not playing it all you have to do is call and request it and many theaters are getting added that way you know, I and that, I know that pre-sales too are really great. So if yeah, every, and the tickets are on buy your now, tickets yeah. now, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, and then it'll be in more places. So that would be Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and where all the info is at 47daysfilm.com, all spelled out, no numbers, 47daysfilm.com. And so Kim, you're gonna have to make sure it's in Grand Rapids if it's not yet, right? That's, that's right. That's right. There you go. <laughs> You'll be our Grand Rapids rep. <laughs> There you go. I'm happy to do it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for the movie for so many reasons. Of course, it's so timely with Easter right Mm -hmm. around the corner, but it also sounds like a movie that is great for teens to watch. Great for, yeah. um, To watch as a family. um, Yes. Would you say, right? Oh, absolutely. The whole family can go and and it's going to be great. I think for everyone will get something out of it. Yeah. It's a, w- amazing. I'm so glad that this is even happening because, yeah. there have been, you know, Easter stories before, but doing it in this way, I mm-hmm. think just makes it so much more relatable, right? So it's not just back in the day and right. that's hard to relate to. That can be hard to relate to. The Chosen has helped with that, but for people who haven't seen The Chosen or whatever, right. um, it's not just back in the day, but it's present time too. 
So mm -hmm. bringing the two worlds together, I think is yeah. an interesting way to do it. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. And so you also have acted in not just uh, Christian uh, things. So talk about some of the other projects you've done before that you're known for. Um, yeah, you know, of... I, actually, I, I've had a wonderful run in Hollywood. It's been a wild, exciting ride. Um, and I've played on many shows that I love and, and respect and cherish in so many ways, because even if they're not, you know, overtly, you know, or even even remotely faith based, they still have good moral codes that they operate by. And so, you know, some of the most recent ones that I've had the pleasure of working on are SEAL Team. I think that's just one of the most amazingly done shows about the military. I come from a military family, so for me, that's very exciting. And to get to see what these guys have to go through, these guys and gals, um, is so incredible and intense. And I just was, I was lucky. I got to do the, the easy job. I was an Intel officer. So <laughs> I was just there harvesting data and didn't have to go out into the field, but, um, it was, it was really, really a great set and a lot of just solid people. And, and I, even some colleagues from a show I worked on, on Fox with Kelsey Grammer, um, called proven innocent were there running camera. So it was really great to see them again. And it's just, it's funny, like this is such a gig based economy, Hollywood, but what you start to understand the longer you're in it is that people you worked with 10 years ago, and this is even true for the chosen are working on a show that you're working on now. So it seems like it's always a new thing, but it's really like the same teams are getting together and creating new projects all the time. So um, a couple of the producers I worked with on a, my first faith based film was called Christmas on Salvation Street. And two of those producers ended up working on the first couple of seasons of The Chosen and our, one of them is still on. So that's been a joy to like run in, into them at the teal carpet parties and be like, I've, I've been waiting to see you because I keep seeing your name in the credits and I haven't been able to talk to you yet. So it's been fun. Um, and then I, I just did another uh, beautiful film. This is a short film that I co-produced with a colleague of mine. It's called Along Came a Callback. And what I love about this story, and I think this theme is a through line for what I'm just working on in general right now, because it's definitely a theme in 47 Days with Jesus, and it's absolutely a theme in The Chosen, but it's a theme of forgiveness. And so you get to go on this journey with these two young artists, one's a writer, one's an actor, and they're having a rocky relationship. They end up breaking up, and you get to witness um, just the raucous comedic ways in which they find each other back in each other's lives um, and the forgiveness steps that they have to go through for what they had been through together. So that's another great story, and that's uh, on Amaletto right now, it's streaming on Amaletto Comedy, so anyone can watch it anytime. Wow, that's so good. What about your yeah. music? So oh, my gosh. Good. Voice Thank you. Absolutely. I love Benefactor, by the way, but they're so Thank I love you. all your music. Yeah. Oh my so gosh. What's going on with your music? <laughs> That's I it's amazing. I'm I have a beautiful fortune of being able to work right now. I'm in development with a really, really talented, you know, platinum award winning or record man, which uh he's he's coaching me and developing me and helping me to become you know, even further in my artistry. So I'm grateful for that and more news to come soon um as we collaborate. But yeah, I've, I've written lots of things and, and sang on lots of numbers for different bands and different, you know, artistic endeavors. And Benefactor is a single I released uh, that has a beautiful music video that was shot by an Emmy award winning cinematographer. And so uh, that's a, that's out right now. And you can see that on YouTube. And yeah, more updates to come for sure. You can't say certain projects till they happen, as you know, they're in the <laughs> Until work. you know the dates. Yeah. <laughs> Until you know the dates. Uh, yes. I, sometimes maybe I shouldn't speak about projects so they happen, but it's amazing. I guess when there's NDAs, that's when it happens, right? Before you, the NDA, yeah. you can speak on it, but once the NDA yeah. comes, Hey, I, I might be having this project and I'm shooting. And then once you sign the NDA, Oh, there's no project anymore. It disappeared. <laughs> the, yeah, exactly. I don't know what you're talking about. Right? I don't know. That, you know, you know I'll, I'll have to let you what know you in mean? four months. Yeah. Where's um, the best place people can connect with you, by the way, where is that best place? Which one? Sorry. Connect with you. Best place. You oh can my gosh. Yes, I'm on uh, all of the social media platforms, I think. I'm on Instagram, which is just my name, Catherine Lidstone. And then on Twitter, I'm Kate Lidstone, C-A-T-E. And uh, I try to do updates on there more frequently, I would say, than on Facebook. But I do have a Facebook page. You're welcome to join that as well. And I have just my website. I have a newsletter you can sign up for. Um, yeah, and I right now, I, I just remembered, Kim, I the one thing I didn't say about music is that I'm sort of branching out into the worship category more. I think I've 
been vaguely doing that in my artistry and you could see some faith-based themes, but it was never really specific. So definitely branching out into that. And, and you can see on all my socials right now, it just releases of different worship covers as I get more into that world. So stay all tuned. Right. <laughs> Excellent. And the, and the last thing is Kim asks a love question. Go ahead, Kim, with your love question. Oh, love. Go ahead. Yeah. A love question. So, um, yeah, I, I lost my husband 14 years ago and I was like floundering and I decided I needed to do something. So I went on this sort of eat, pray, love journey. I dedicated oh. a year to figuring out the true meaning of love using first Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. And Amen. I took one yeah. word or phrase a month to figure out. And the, the things that I figured out about love just blew my mind, rocked my world. And so I'm always curious because I think if you put 12 people in a room, you'd get 12 different answers if you asked what is love, right? True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But John says God is love. So if mm. God is love, you know, if you live it, then you're living the right way. But so where does love play a role in your life? Oh man, I feel like love is um love is like the daily choice. It's, I think it's, it could appear in every moment that you're walking this earth. And, you know, we all have moments of getting frustrated or getting um, angry with each other or expecting more of yourself or, you know, and people, you know, there's all kinds of, this is such, we could have such a long thorough discussion. About this. I'll try to wrap it up. But, you know, you hear phrases like your self-talk and your, um, just how how you treat other people and all these other things right so i guess for me love is like a constant daily choice and i have the freedom to love because i was first loved and so for me that's you know if someone's putting me in a situation that i feel frustrated in or if they are you know not as efficient as i would like them to be i think it really just always goes back to the golden rule how would i want to be treated if I were under these conditions or circumstances or if I were in their position or wearing their shoes. And so it's way easier said than done, but I think love is just, I, I like to think of it as Jesus's love and how, how he just loves everyone exactly where they are. And he doesn't try to force change. He doesn't try to, yeah, he doesn't try to imprison his love is open and free and it's a choice and you can walk into it. And I think, that's what we should all be aspiring to every day. <laughs> Fantastic. Great answer yeah. for sure. We appreciate it, Catherine. It was such a great to ch chat with you. I see big things coming for you, even though as wow. Kim highlighted, they're going to happen. So Thank they you. So we appreciate it, Catherine. Thanks <laughs> for stopping by. Thank you so much. It's been a joy to talk with you both. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. You're uh, watching special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast, guys. Take care.